So yeah, always double check this one level in particular when you get your blood works done. Because if your doctor doesn't check it, it can literally trigger dialysis. Catherine here. There are 10 errors many primary care providers still make in 2024 with CKD patients and that could put a serious dent in your kidney health. Don't miss the number one in particular because, yeah, that one sends people into dialysis. Usually your doctor evaluates you, but today we are going to switch roles. And you will be evaluating your doctors not the other way around we will rate your doctor from zero to ten zero being zero errors and ten being ten errors then you write in comment section if your doctor is you know a zero a one and so on spoiler alert i think we will mostly get fours and fives i don't think we are going to see many zeros or many tens in comment section because are these people completely incapable of telling me? Yeah, I don't like that. Sorry, sorry. You see, if your doctor makes zero errors, they are a real life doctor house. A genius. But if they make all the 10 errors, you are probably going to need a Ouija board to comment on this video. Oh, yeah. There are 10 errors you should make sure your doctor is not making. Let's see what they are. Number 10. Not diagnosing people with CKD. Fact. Most CKD diagnoses come way too late at the point that 9 out of 10 CKD sufferers don't know they have it. According to the CDC, of course. And this is a genius move towards eradicating CKD once and for all. I mean... We are going to have a lot less of those pesky CKD patients if we don't diagnose them at all. So guys, if you know anyone with diabetes or high blood pressure, send them this video now. You could save their lives. And by the way, count this as an error if you had blood work with creatinine levels above normal before your doctor told you you had kidney disease. Next, number nine, measuring blood pressure wrong. Wait, wait, wait. What? Now, this is also a big problem in the medical world as way more people are diagnosed with high blood pressure than it should. And they end up taking unnecessary medications that damage their kidneys. Yeah, yeah, I know what you may be thinking. These poor doctors can't catch a break. Can they? I mean, their job is super tough. If they underdiagnose people, they end up in dialysis. If they overdiagnose people, they end up in dialysis as well. Oh, what can we do to help them? Ah, yeah, I got it. Let's make sure they are doing blood pressure measurements in the correct way. Or, as I like to call it, the stress test of doom. Because nothing says accurate like a frantic nurse and a ticking clock. So next time they take your blood pressure at the doctor office, make sure they do it correctly. How? First of all, before a blood pressure measurement, you must empty your bladder. Also, before taking a measurement, you are supposed to sit and relax for at least 5 minutes. Then, you must also sit with your arms supported and at heart level and take your measurement in silence without doing anything else. If the measurement is not taken like this, it can result in a wrong reading and you should count it as an error. Yeah, sometimes it's not your home blood pressure monitor that's broken. Up next, number 8. What could be even worse than overprescribing medications that can damage the kidneys? Not testing CKD patients for vitamin D levels. Okay, this is incredibly common, so I bet many of you will have to count this as an error. But how can a vitamin deficiency be a medical error, you may ask? Well, here's the fact. Up to 84.7% of CKD patients have vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, shocking. I know. When I found out about this fact, I was almost as shocked as the day I found out they discontinued my favorite snack. Almost. Anyway. 
This vitamin deficiency isn't just a random occurrence. It's both a cause and a consequence of kidney damage. Yeah, guys, it's the chicken and egg of the medical world. The kidneys are supposed to activate the vitamin D we get from food and sun exposure into the form the body needs, but damaged kidneys can't do that. Ah, that's why so many sickly patients have vitamin D deficiency. And that's why your doctor is supposed to test you for vitamin D deficiency and to prescribe accordingly. If your doctor hasn't done this, count this as an error. Are you all keeping count? Write down in the comment section how your doctors are doing till now. You see, some doctors today still recommend a vacation instead of checking your vitamin D levels. I mean, why take supplements when you can just relocate to a sunnier climate? Wait, wait, wait. What? Time for our number seven now. Okay, here's a tough one. Number seven is not understanding serum phosphorus levels. Okay, here's another serious issue that many PCP don't know how to treat nor to diagnose in CKD patients. Hyperphosphatemia or having too high levels of phosphorus. Okay, this is a very dangerous toxin we get mostly from animal-based foods and junk foods in general, and that's responsible for kidney, heart, and cardiovascular damage. Never ever let your serum phosphorus go higher than 4.6 mg per DL if you have CKD. Is your doctor testing you for phosphorus levels? Are you receiving the appropriate treatment? Now guys, here's the fun part about serum phosphorus. Most labs will mark a serum phosphorus of 5.0 mg per DL as still in rage. However, if you have CKD, your serum phosphorus is supposed to be lower than that of the general population and this can potentially confuse even a good doctor. Yeah, told you we were not going to get many zeros today. Up next, number six is still telling CKD patients to avoid fruit and veggies in 2024. <gasps> so if your doctor says that your potassium level is too high and thus you must avoid fruit and veggies, well, count that as an error. Okay, how come so many doctors today are completely ignoring crucial levels such as vitamin D and phosphorus and then obsessing over potassium? Yeah! And for a hundred thousand dollars, the correct answer is... Because too many doctors are not paying attention during their refresher courses. Because too many doctors are not paying attention during their refresher courses. Yeah, that's the correct answer. Okay guys, I'm not going too much in depth about this, but since 2022 doctors are supposed to find and resolve the actual cause of the issue if you have too high potassium levels. Not to just tell you to ditch bananas and potatoes. And if you want to know more about this, watch my video up here and also down in the description. And also mark this as yet another error. Are you keeping count? And guys, since you still have your last blood test on hand from the last entry, let's take a look at number five, ignoring metabolic acidosis. Okay, luckily this is not as common as some of the previous entry. I mean, metabolic acidosis can seriously ruin your day since it can lead to hospitalization and most doctors know this. Or do they? To make sure, grab your last blood analysis and take a look at your CO2 level. If this level is too low, below 22 milli equivalents per liter, you need to supplement sodium bicarbonate. If you don't have this level on your last blood analysis or your level is below 22 and you are not taking sodium bicarbonate, well, write it down in the comment section and call your doctor while you're at it. This can be an immediate danger, as I was saying. Up next, number four, let's talk about your thyroid. What is that supposed to mean? No, seriously, has your doctor ever told you this? Let's talk about thyroid. If they haven't, mark this down as yet another error. Okay, did you know that having kidney disease is an almost surefire way to have an underactive thyroid? Yeah, if you are having symptoms such as fatigue, cold intolerance and inexplicable weight gain, well, it could be the thyroid. 
Yeah, not many people know this, but when you have kidney disease, you are very likely to have too high phosphorus levels and too low calcium. To compensate, the body needs to take calcium from your bones. But how does it do that? Well, by releasing something called parathyroid hormone. Over time, this will overstimulate the thyroid and cause it to stop working as it should. Has your doctor ever told you this? No? Well, write it down in the comment section as an error. Okay, up next, another error that's as easy to catch as an app when your thyroid's on strike. Number three, underdiagnosing anemia. Okay, this is super scary as well. Fact, if you have CKD, your chances of having anemia are more than 50% if you are a man and more than 70% if you are a woman. And this is a huge risk for your kidneys, especially because way too many doctors are not doing tests for anemia nor prescribing treatments. So up to 70% of patients have anemia and less than 4% are receiving the appropriate treatment. I mean, is it just me or this video is turning into a guide on how to sue your doctor? A hundred ways to sue your doctor. How does that sound for a title? Okay, up next, number two. If you do sue your doctor, be sure to find another one after that. Otherwise, they could use contrast dye in some imaging tests. Okay, jokes aside, imaging tests done with contrast are used to get a clearer picture of what's happening inside your body. These tests are almost always used to detect some dangerous stuff going on. You know, aneurysms, strokes, tumors, brain injuries. It's rare that CT scans and MRIs with contrast are prescribed for stuff that's not serious. But even if a doctor really needs to use dye in a test, they should be very careful if the patient suffers from CKD. So let's hope none of you is going to report this as an error. Okay, number one now, the worst medical error of them all is, drum roll please, prescribing NSAIDs to kidney patients. Okay, but now you may ask, what doctor is dumb enough to give an NSAID to a CKD patient? Ha! Huh, you'd be surprised. Now, if you are looking at your medicine cabinet and you spot some aspirin or stuff such as Advil, Montrin, Naprosine, well, stop watching this video and get on the phone with your doctor now. Maybe talk to a lawyer as well. Seriously, there have been reports in the news of patients victim of this medical error that sued and won. After ending up in dialysis, unfortunately, and if you are lucky enough that no white coat is trying to actively destroy your kidneys at this time, let me know in comment section what score your doctor got. By the way, if you found out your doctor made some mistakes and now you are worried, also let me know in comment section because maybe I've made a video about that and I can show you how to solve the issue. And if you want to know more about the most common medical errors that involve medications, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you for watching.